Hello and welcome to the Career Success Podcast. I'm Jason Connolly. If you're a regular listener, it's great to have you back. But if you're new, welcome to the show. In this series every week, we speak to the biggest names in business all across the globe. We talk about their career stories, the lessons learned, how they overcome challenges and what success habits they practice. Practical advice to help you in your career. If you have a passion for business, then this is the podcast for you. In this episode, I'm delighted to be joined by Kent Campbell from San Francisco in California in the US. Kent is the chief strategist for Reputation X, an online reputation management firm that helps individuals, celebrities and companies improve everything about their online profile. This often involves editing Wikipedia, improving star ratings and amplifying positive online content while suppressing anything negative. In the end, he helps people choose one personal brand over another by engineering the lens through which most people see the world today, i.e. search engines. Kent, thanks for joining me. Well, thank you for inviting me, Jason. I appreciate it. Now, it's a really interesting topic, an online reputation. It's uh, the first thing you do these days when you go on to, to buy something in the likes of Amazon is you you check the ratings. So we'll come on to that um, in, in a minute because I think it's a really interesting topic what you do and I'd love to find out more about that. But tell us about you, how, how, you, you know, how your career got you to this place. Well, sure. Um, I began in search engine optimization, which is basically making you know websites uh, work better in, in search engines. And I've been in it for a long time. I mean, pre-Google even. I'm, we used to build websites years ago for Alta Vista, which was pretty easy to game. And then Google came along and just absolutely changed the game. So uh, I eventually moved from search engine optimization into kind of a subspecialty uh, of online reputation management which is for, for individuals, for political entities, for governments and people you know and people you've never heard of before. Right, really interesting. And kind of how long have you been in this industry? Oh, gosh, uh, 20 years. I'd say it's only been called online reputation management uh, for, oh, I'd say 15 years probably. But uh, it's been quite a while. It's been a, it's been a great ride. Really, we, we wanted to develop a, a, an organization, Reputation X, that everyone who works on our team, they're kind of digital nomads. Uh, and that's been that way <laughs> since the very beginning. In fact, uh, selfishly, uh, when we founded the company, uh, my idea was, well, maybe uh, maybe I could take my kids around the world for a few years and, uh, and kind of homeschool them with this great new company. And uh, lo and behold, a few years after, after doing it, we did just that. Got on a plane and just traveled the globe for years, uh, homeschooling our, our kids and, uh, and working remotely. And uh, it's been it's been a wonderful, uh, wonderful trip since then. That sounds like a really interesting experience for your children as well, to kind of see the world and taking loads of different cultures growing up. That must have been, uh, you know, did that kind of their, their career now, that kind of start in life? You know, it it, it it was kind of a double-edged sword in a way. It, yes, they, they they got to learn French, they got to learn Spanish, they got to uh, be in parades in Hong Kong, uh, you know, doing crazy things. You know, when we wanted to teach our kids, uh, you know, about, um, about ancient Rome, we'd go to ancient Rome. I recall sitting in the Colosseum in Rome with an iPad watching Roman movies and just kind of stopping the action and walking around with the kids. We did the same thing in Pompeii. We did the same thing at Stonehenge, you know, and, uh, and all over the world. So there's really nothing better. But I'll say when after an experience, after growing up that way, you bring your kids home, especially back to America. American kids are kind of mean sometimes, you know, and uh, kids around the world, according to my kids, tend to be nicer actually than, than oh. American kids. Yeah, interesting. And so they kind of got picked on because of their experiences. And eventually they just stopped telling new people that they met about their experiences uh, so they wouldn't be singled out. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's sad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it really is. But, uh, you know, at the end, I think, you know, the, the benefits certainly outweighed anything negative. And so when people come to you then, <laughs> is it normally off the back of not having a great reputation or what's the kind of process that, you know, people go through to use you? Well, I think it probably starts with somebody Googling their name and right. th and thinking, oh, my God, how long has that been there? You know, And then we'll get that phone call for a reputation repair. But a lot of times it's people who are looking to make job transition. And mm. they know that today just about every HR person is certainly going to Google them. And they want to make sure that mm. what's seen is the best it can possibly be. And that ranges from just cleaning up some minor things to what we call engineering someone's online mythology, which can even include the creation of Wikipedia pages for some people who are notable enough to be able to earn one. Uh, it really runs the gamut. And then others come to us just for, for brand building. You know, there's nothing really bad, but they know that it can be better. 
And they know that, you know, today, as you mentioned earlier, the lens through which we all see the world is search results. You know, a couple hundred years wow. ago, when you were, spent your life traveling no more than, you know, from birth to death, more than 12 miles from your place of birth, you know, reputation was nothing that you, you couldn't really do much about it because everybody knew you. And, but today, especially during the pandemic, the lens through which we see the world is Google. And the interesting thing about that is Google is fungible. Google is changeable. And so it's almost like Google is a form of augmented reality, but that form of augmented reality can actually be manipulated for good and for evil. Hmm. T t tell us more about that. Well, you know, I was at a DEF CON conference a few years ago in Las Vegas, Nevada in the U.S., and uh, a gentleman, I believe his name was Chris Rock, gave a very interesting uh, presentation. He talked about how to take over a country. And the method that he used was a combination of methods. One of the things was to hack into government websites and subtly or dramatically change the content while simultaneously hacking into um, banking websites, changing transaction data, and then using uh, negative propaganda campaigns, etc., mm -hmm. in order to get the people to turn against their government. And he did it in such a detailed way, I couldn't believe that he was showing the code about how to do this. Now, he'd been hired by security, the government security, to say, you know, how are, well, it was a Middle Eastern company, there, a country that they were targeting, but, you know, how are, how is it possible that somebody could attack us? And this was his actual report that he provided to me and a thousand hackers. Well, the fact that a small group of well-funded third parties can go in and change by changing Google, by changing search results, by editing Wikipedia pages, by editing the references to Wikipedia pages, to uh, you know Moldovans out there filling social media with 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 fake news and misinformation. You know that's on a on a large and dramatic scale, but it happens on a much smaller scale as well too. That level of of, of evil happens on a much smaller scale. It happens with individuals. So for example, we'll have be careful who you date, okay? If because if you have a partner. And mm. things don't go well. And they have even a minor understanding of search engine optimization and media. Be careful of dating PR people because they can absolutely destroy your life using many of the same methods minus the hacking. By simply That's placing really sad to, to even yeah. think that, you know, people would be so malicious. Well, you know, it's, it's an emotional thing. We have had many clients who had been in relationships and uh, that didn't go well, didn't go well at all. And the, the jilted lover would then go to the press and just make up stories. And of course, the sensationalism of that story carries it up in search results, uh -huh. especially uh -huh. if someone's name is in the headline. A lot of people visit it. A lot of other websites link to it creating links, that strengthens something negative. And then it's really fueled and amplified by, by humans, what we call negativity bias. When you see something negative, you're just going to turn, you're going to look. You're more likely to look at to watch a train wreck than to watch someone walking a little old lady across the street, you know, and that's just the way that we are and we've evolved. So when you have something that's negative and sensational, people are going to pay attention. And the real problem is if someone comes along and runs a retraction later, that doesn't really generate the same amount of sensationalism, mm. does it? And so what happens but, because yeah. of the way the algorithms work is the negative information, even though it's inaccurate or completely false, rises to the top and it stays there. Mm, it's interesting as well. It's, it's kind of, you know, the news in general, anything negative people jump on the back of it's you know what makes the whole news industry go round doesn't it that's that's <laughs> sure kind of the you know it's funny you know back in the olden days uh before mm. google you know the the model was completely different you know you could run you could have in the united states walter cronkite and he would do this weird thing where he would go along and he would just read the news he would just read the news and we would you know it was it was not colored really in any way but today because we have you know everything's ad supported these days in order to get somebody to click on something you really have to make that a sensational clickbait headline uh. even if it's not accurate because your entire business is based on getting people to click on that headline and then to stay on the page for a certain amount of time so you can serve ads it's not any longer simply about communicating the truth it's been monetized and that means that it's been weaponized mm, that's really interesting so do, is there like a typical kind of you know usual circumstance you find when people come to you or is it kind of, you know quite varying and broad people's situations or is there kind of a typical you know usual set of circumstances you tend to see 
You know, they're really all, all across the board. Uh, celebrities have different problems than politicians. And it really mm. depends on, on what the problem is. If something negative is online, let's say that you have the New York Times, very, very powerful, powerful publication. It shows up worldwide. It's not like a, like a local news channel that may only show up in Google oh. in, a, in a small region. But you've got something really powerful. Whether it's true or not, accurate or not, based on a few technical factors, that's going to be really, really hard to beat. And that happens quite often to political clients, to celebrity clients. But then you've got, let's say you've got a, a financial CEO who's got some issue and it's maybe a, more of a local thing. That's a lot easier problem to solve because local publications online are a lot easier to either have something removed, which is rare that it can be removed, or to have it more, more likely to have it suppressed so that its visibility drops. If you can drop something down to page three or four or five of search results, it's like a tree falling in the woods. No one cares. But if it's mm. on the first page of your branded search results, it can kill you. Yeah. And I guess, you know, I've had it before in my business, people put malicious, uh, you know, Google reviews and, you know, it's, it's not easy to get rid of these things once they exist. Yeah. Well, you know, you think about the actors out there, there's, there's a lot of money behind it. Imagine you want to make, you, you want to short some stock. Well, if you have the apparatus in place, you can make it look even just for a short period of time, like that company is having problems before the fact checkers catch it and remove it. But it happens fast enough that you can actually catch a dip, you can cause a dip. And so we've had clients come to us saying, you know, we've, this is all baloney and this is all false. And we, are, you know, we have law enforcement after it, but it's happening. International actors are doing it. How do we, how do we do this? So how do we get around this? So the only thing that we can do at that point because it's happening so quickly, is to strengthen their first pages of search results so that if something negative is posted, it doesn't rise. You're flushing out the bad with the good. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we're kind of crowding it out, exactly, by strengthening it, by putting the right stories up there, by countering information very quickly, if it's necessary, sometimes using their own sites, sometimes setting up custom websites to be able to do it. So that if someone is doing due diligence on a product, service, company, an individual, at least for a short time, we have, uh, we have a counter story up there about what's really going on. And when the bad news passes, then we'll take that website and we'll take any of the social media we've done about it down and clean things up. So there's, <laughs> there's no residue after our work is done. So I, I'm guessing you've worked with some high profile people who, you know, have, have come to you with all sorts of a matter of challenges. We have, we have, and I would love to be able to give you a list of names, but as you can imagine, if I were to do that, the confidentiality would be broken. But I can say that they are all over the board. Their clothes are hanging in your closet. Their products mm -hmm. are in your kitchen, and you've heard of quite a few of them. Quite a few of you haven't, though. You know, there are a lot of, a lot of people who are really under the radar mm -hmm. who make things happen that prefer to stay under the radar. They, uh, they operate in the background, and when someone drags them by their, by their collar to the foreground saying bad things, there's just nothing. It's funny how many billionaires will come to us that have just nothing online about them. And if there's nothing online about you and then something negative is posted, now it's the only thing online about you as a result of your humility is negative. Oh, wow. So then you have to go through a process of starting to give them an online presence. So it's almost, yeah. if someone wants to be private, there's a reason why there's not anything online. <laughs> and you necessarily yeah. coming along saying, actually, the only way to get rid of this bad is for us to put a lot of good out there. Um, yeah. I can imagine that doesn't always go down too well. Well, that's the conversation, you know, I, somebody who's, who's recently given $50 million to charity, I say, that's fantastic. Who'd you give it to? And they give us a list and we do a search and we say, but you're not mentioned. Well, you know, I just, I like to give anonymously. And that's when the, 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 the forehead palm happens. Mm. Like, you know, I appreciate the humility, but we have to have something to work with here. You know, yeah, and, you've uh, got to help me help you. Yeah, yeah. I've been surprised over the years to how many very well to do individuals are so humble. <laughs> they really are. They're just wonderful people. Even no matter how nice you are, bad things can still happen to you. Have you ever had situations where you, you know, kind of morally and ethically, you, you know, you, you don't agree with necessarily fixing this reputation, or has that never been an issue for you? It happens every day. How do you deal with it when it's, do you ever have to turn things away saying, you know, thanks so much, but it's just isn't for me. Well, we have something internally called the board of soccer moms. Most of them, <laughs> the board of soccer moms. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nearly everyone in the company is female. I'm the, 
one of the very few men in the company. And so what we do is we turn it over to the board of soccer moms and they make a decision as to whether we're going to take a client or not. And they've got some hard no's. Uh, anything that's uh, sexual, bad for children, extremely bad for the environment, you know, if it was recent, and a few other rules, you know, we just, we don't take. But then we've got some gray area things. Uh, for example, we had a, a famous hunter who was caught bagging, legally bagging big game in Africa. Oh, right. Didn't break the law, but it doesn't look good. And, yeah, that's uh, we, not really the sort of thing you want to be associated with. Yeah, it's not a good look. And uh, it was all over the the first page, you know, a somewhat famous person. And uh, we ended up not taking that one because just at the end of the day, really, you don't want anybody to work on something they don't want to work on. If they don't feel good about working on it, then you're not going to put your best forward. You're not going to do a great mm. job. Also, we only take something where we have an 85% probability of improving their situation, oh. strongly improving it. So if something's kind of in the in the middle gray area, it's really incredibly difficult. Like if they're in the middle of a major lawsuit and the SEC here in the United States is going after them, uh, and the New York Times is writing about it, the New York Post is writing about them, CNN, and uh. it's just a crazy, crazy problem. We'll, we'll tell them, look, we really need to wait till the dust settles here a bit. And there are a lot of people who will take your money, but we suggest just kind of grinning, bearing it for a few months, wait till this settles down, and then we can talk. Yeah, because there's only, I guess, so much you can do. You can't wave a magic wand if you are absolutely working with someone when there's negative articles coming onto places like the New York Times every day. There's only so much you can do to suppress that. That's uh, that, that's a challenge in itself, especially with a site as sure powerful is. as that. So yeah, I, I totally get you there. What advice would you give to people then? So someone's got a business, you know, is there some good housekeeping that you tell people all the time? This is what they should be doing to ensure their online reputation is, is one of uh, uh, health and prosperity and all things abundant to, uh, you know, making money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think the basic advice that I give to individuals as well as businesses is, first of all, understand who your customers are, who are your stakeholders who are examining your brand, and then kind of put yourself in their shoes where you would do searches, for example. Um, let's say that you're a firm that has uh, international locations. You'll want to see what your search results look like from each of those locations. You want to see what they're seeing and you want to, you know, Mm. scroll down a couple of pages. Then what you want to do is look at an individual or a, a firm such as your own that's similar and take note of the types of search results that they have on their first and second pages. Take a look at what kind of social media exposure they have and then do a, a gap analysis. Just look at it and say, well, they have this and we're in the same industry. Maybe we can get this. And that gives you an idea of what your public relations should pursue. Because you know that if, if three of your competitors have uh, an article in Forbes, that you probably could get an article in Forbes somehow. You know? And so that's, that's the first thing is, is to do that. Another thing to do is to take a look at things like your Google Knowledge Panel, which is that information box in the upper corner of, uh, for example, desktop search results, and to make sure that it's accurate to claim your knowledge panel. There's a little little button at the bottom of a knowledge panel. You can you can click on that. You have to prove who you are, obviously. They don't mm. want someone else controlling your your panel. And to do that, you take screenshots of the back end of your website, your social media, et cetera, and your identification. Mm. And what that'll do is it'll allow you to change your and to update some of your information on the knowledge panel. And then to 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 see where that information is coming from. Because very often, I mean Google's smart, but it does not always get things right. Those are a few things you can do. And and is there times when you are kind of dealing with a, a client where l literally, you know, you've tried, but, you know, there's one article that you need taken down and actually this is a legal issue and, you know, you're going to have to go down a route of defamation or is that where your kind of services stop? If it really is defamation or libel, so often people say, there, this this person's defaming me, but it really isn't going to stand up in court. You know, It's a very and hard so, thing. It's expensive as well. To take and and that's the other thing. Uh, reputation management is less expensive, uh, you know, by and by, to attorneys. You know, that can really, you can start really racking up the dollars with attorneys. So, But we do work with a lot of attorneys. So, for example, in the aftermath of a lawsuit, we'll be asked to come in and clean up. And usually... What will happen is that in the settlement or, or whatever financial award has been given, that will have reputation management built into it because, you know, we need to clean up everything, you know, 
if, if something's in Google, people assume that it's true. If you think about it, Google's job is to organize the world's information, but it can't tell what's true and what's not true. It can tell you what's relevant, but it can't tell you truth. Mm. There must need to be, at some point in the future, there's people are going to, well, I think the world are waking up to it now, aren't they, with things like uh, fake news, stuff that's not real, and there seems to be a lot being done, well, I say there's a lot being done, really, is there a lot being done, but, you know, it, with things like untruths online, um, especially on social media, there's, there's there does seem to be a lot of conversation about that. Yeah, and, and people are trying to, you know, the only way to really solve this is algorithmically. Because the ampl amplification mm. of, of social media untruths, uh, you know, I can't recall who said it, but, uh, you know, a, a lie has made it halfway around the world be before the truth gets its boots on, right? And, and so when things are amplified, they just move so quickly that even if you take it down five minutes later, it still reached tens of thousands of people in some cases. And they believe it because of confirmation bias. We tend to believe things that we already kind of believe. You know, as they say, uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna lie, mix in some truth. Mix a little truth into the lie, and it'll be a lot easier for someone to swallow. The same thing happens online. There's definitely a level of cynical. Uh, I can I get cynical vibes from you. You've been in this industry a long time, <laughs> Ken, and I can just I can see you've been there, done that, wore the t-shirt. You are a online reputation veteran. So it's really interesting what you've said, and you know I think there's going to be nuggets here for you know people. And I think it's, it's, you know, a great conversation to be having because I think you make some valid points about uh, actually going and doing some research into, you know, how the brand, you know, kind of sells itself online. And um, a lot of people, you know, I'm guessing by the time they come to you, this has been going on for some some time and they've only just got to a, a moment of realisation. So, I, you know, I guess one bit of advice that I may be taking from this is to maybe do a regular health check online about you, your company and all things associated. You brought up, you know, kind of bitter exes. And, you know, I, I've had situation, uh, oh, you won't unpack my whole life story, but I've had a very similar situation. And, you know, there, there, there's, you know, a sense of real severity with some what some of these people have been through, you know, a lot of the time, it sounds to me like you're, you're receiving calls from victims of untruths and things, you know, which are actually having a detrimental impact on, you know, someone's mental health. Yeah, that's absolutely true. It, it, it really mm. is. And you, you read something that's not true and Google's and because it's not defamation and it's not a violation of Google's terms of service. For example, if you've got nude pictures of someone underage or you have, mm. uh, you know, some IP like you, you own you own a photograph that somebody's, you know, using it and, you know, it, illegally, you know, it, there are so many things. You just have to do. be so careful these days, don't you? It's, you, oh, you, do. you know, oh, you do. Don't, mm. be careful what you put in writing and what you do, because, you know, it could end up on the Internet. And, you know, that's yes, we're all more connected than we've ever been. But with that, you know, can come problems. So, you know, I think you've made some really valid points, Ken. And um, if people want to find out more about you or indeed Reputation X, where can they go to? Well, uh, Google, <laughs> reputationx.com. And there'll I'm only be good positive. stuff about you online, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. Ken, you know, you... Mostly, but there actually is one post, and it's buried so far back, I don't know, but there was a competing reputation management company. We never figured out who it was, and they put all that information up uh, about us, some negative information, and they cut and pasted the same information for other reputation management and PR firms, uh, word for word, and only changed our name. And so we managed to get most of it taken down. But there, it is it is up there. It's a cutthroat world out there, even for us. It is. And I, I hear you there. And I do agree. Kent, thanks so much for joining me on this episode. It's been insightful. Thank you, Jason. I really appreciate it. That was Kent Campbell from San Francisco in California in the US. I'm Jason Connolly. This is the Career Success Podcast. Until next time. Goodbye.